What do you want to know? Sean Bradley. Never had a middle name, and after my time in the service, I didn't have much use for the first one. Well, let's just say I had an abrupt and unceremonious departure from the NCR's armed forces. Leave it at that. Besides, this vocation affords a bit more freedom than one enjoys as a grunt. Not to mention the pay. There's no comparison. Oh, you're not going to let up, are you? I spent 15 years in the infantry. was five away from my pension. I was a staff sergeant when I fucked it all up in Bullhead. I was with General uh, President Kimball's Expeditionary Force. It wasn't the toughest fighting I'd seen, but we were pushing hard, getting leaner on supplies and manpower as we pushed ahead. Somebody told me the first casualty of war is innocence, and that's absolute bullshit. The first casualty is fucking sleep. Marching, setting up camp, running night reconnaissance, fire watch, all these things mean next to no shut-eye for the rank and file. The point is that my guys were wearing out, and I needed them alert. A dozing sentry can get an entire platoon killed. So I reconnect with a few old contacts and manage to scrounge up some jet. I thought it would be a stopgap solution, something temporary. Wrong. Before I knew it, half the squad was hooked, so even when I stopped distributing it, the damage was done. Don't get me wrong, it did some good. It may have saved some lives in the final push when some of those boys were running on adrenaline. But when the smoke cleared and we settled in, they were still fiending. Things went downhill pretty quick, and the brass wanted heads to roll. They were threatening every NCO in the company. Hell, the entire division. It started with me, so I jumped on that grenade. Only reason they didn't line me up in front of a firing squad was because of my combat record. Instead, I got ten years in the brig. I did five. One of my old NCOs, a man named Lancaster, did me a solid in the trial, testifying on my behalf. Not sure what became of him. So, there I was. Dishonorably discharged, no pension, no real work skills outside fighting. I was a ready-made merc. It never suited me. Besides, that would mean getting married. And there was only ever one real woman in my life. And she's long gone. Christ, you really want to hear this stuff? Okay. The woman, she was every bit a woman was a good bit older than me when I met her. I was 16, when everything you feel is magnified. Her name was Jessica Wright, married to some big shot in the Wright family. It was freak luck meeting her, really. She had an arrangement with the bishops where they'd secretly deliver jets since her husband was a control freak. One of our guys was sick, and since I was the next slinger in line, young Bradley got the job of delivering jet to Mrs. Wright. I remember seeing her the first time in that black dress, she had dark skin and eyes and those hips. Jesus, I can almost feel them. Maybe it was just good timing, but we connected right away. It was like nothing I had felt before, and nothing since. Jess was the sort of woman who could put crazy thoughts in your head with just a look, not to mention her touch. Jesus, she was amazing. I had dumb dreams about killing her husband, marrying her, she was the focus of my youth, my passion. Maybe I left it all with her. When I had to leave Reno, I wrote her a letter asking if she'd go with me. She never wrote back. I figured she'd moved on. Being in the military, always in camp or on campaign, I tried to forget about her. I had more than my share of whores, but it wasn't the same. Funny thing is that after all this time, I mostly remember Jess's smell. That perfume, her hair... Not a day goes by that I don't think of her. That was almost 25 years ago. I'm sure she's moved on. I should have done the same long ago. Maybe you're right. When you're detached from something for so long, it's easy to let nostalgia skew your perception. She made her choices, I made mine. It's just that simple. What is it? New Reno. It's one hell of a town. Maybe not as big as Vegas, but damn, it's wild. I miss it, even with the drama between the families. Not sure if I'll ever get to go back, though. My mom died when I was four or five. After that, I was on my own, living on the streets for a few years. I wouldn't wish that on anyone. 
I developed a talent for pickpocketing tourists, and that got me by till I was about nine or so. Then one day I pickpocketed the wrong guy. He was a made man, one of the Mordinos. Caught me going after his pocket watch. Damn near beat me to death on the street. I didn't make a noise, though. Wouldn't give that cocksucker the satisfaction. Apparently one of the bishops saw it and liked my moxie. They got me patched up and took me under their wing, got me distributing jet. That's the big money maker out there. I turned into a pretty good dealer, had a solid reputation with the bishops. If I'd stuck around, who knows, I might have gotten made. But, like a lot of things, I fucked it up. When I was 16, young, dumb, and full of cum, I ran into that Mordino fucker again. We were in a bar and he popped off about that beating he laid on me, tried to embarrass me in front of everyone. I ignored it for a while. I waited till he went in the bathroom, then I put him in a chokehold. He started crying, pissing himself. Then I strangled him till he went limp. But you can't off a maid guy and expect nobody to notice. I had to leave town. Mr. Bishop said he couldn't protect me in the city anymore. So I drifted west with a caravan until I saw a recruiting office. When you're starving and homeless, three hots and a cot is a damn good deal. What is it? What do you want to know? There are so many bullshit rumors. I don't know what to think of him. Some ranger told me House drinks his own piss and lives in a test tube. I've also heard stories of airships, talking, death claws, and other nonsense. I tend to be skeptical of these stories. House is in the same category. What is it? I spent most of my career chasing down raiders and slavers. From what I hear, the Legion is the same thing, just on a bigger scale. They're no better than most of those other savages outside the NCR. They have organization and discipline, but not much else. But, to be fair, sometimes organization and discipline are enough. The NCR tends to forget that and just focuses on fielding warm bodies. I know one thing. We sure as fuck better not underestimate them. What is it? Good people. Bad fucking leadership. Kimball's okay, but the Senate? Bunch of money-grubbing fat cats, paid off by miners and cattlemen. It's the same in the military. Oliver is fucking useless. Too many of the officers got their rank by playing politics, not from combat experience. It seems to me like we were damn lucky at Hoover Dam. I wouldn't count on that luck to hold two times in a row. But if we can win at Zulu, maybe we can hold out at the dam. Either way, I don't plan on being anywhere near here when the music starts. What is it? I fight a lot of fucking boredom, that's for damn sure. Jokes aside, it was mainly small bands of raiders, bandits or slavers. I gotta admit, there were few things more gratifying than freeing slaves. It's an awful state. Slavers treat people worse than their dogs. Maybe that's why I despise the Legion. I hear they have a giant slave camp off in Arizona, mining metal for weapons. Hundreds of slaves there. But I digress. Most of the Raiders were just small bands until the 80s came along. Those fuckers are a rough bunch, and they're growing. I ran into a few white legs, also the Claws. Those crazy fucks drink death claw blood, wear claws on gloves, and gut you in a second. But most of the maniacs I fought were just murdering slobs camped in the desert. Nothing special. There's a lot of them on the frontier. Okay, let's get going. <laughs> 